afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, welcome to Louisville, Kentucky. This is day number seven of the uh, eighth annual Derby City Classic. And we'd like to uh, welcome all those you, of you viewing on billiardclub.net. Uh, once again, day number seven of nine days. We're in the second of three events. The first event was Bank Pool, 475 players. It was won by Jason Miller of Dayton, Ohio. Runner-up, Jason Kirkwood of Walker, Michigan. Uh, each division plays for prize money and points. The uh, overall point winner at the end of nine days gets a $25,000 bonus and is crowned world all-around champion. Jason Miller of Dayton, Ohio uh, leads that category at this point in time. He is also in the final four of the one pocket, the second of the three events. And the other semifinal match uh, involves the two gentlemen we're going to introduce at this point in time. Uh, the format is race to three games, single elimination. Each player has an opportunity to rebuy one time and one time only of the final four. Jason Miller, Sean Putnam, no rebuys. They're playing right now. The other matchup is uh, the matchup we're presenting for you right now. And uh, one gentleman has a rebuy left. That's Mr. Alex Pegulian. So we're going to be playing a 3 o'clock round Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for sure. If Mr. Pegulian uh, happens to lose one of his next two matches, there'll be a 9 o'clock matchup for the finals of this year's One Pocket Action. This time we'd like to introduce the two principals uh, from the Republic of the Philippines. He is a former World Nine Ball champion, and he is the reigning U.S. Open Nine Ball champion. A warm welcome, please, for the Lion, Mr. Alex Pegulian. Thank you. And his opponent is sponsored by Pool Yacht Sports, player representative for San Miguel Beer and Talkin' Tex. He is an international superstar known as the Magician. Please welcome, also from the Republic of the Philippines, Mr. Efren Reyes. Thank you. And at this time, we'd like to turn it over to the voice of AccuStats, Mr. Bill Cardona in the booth with him, Danny DiLiberto. Gentlemen, you may lag for the first break. Take it away, you guys. AccuStats Video Productions presents from Louisville, Kentucky, the 2006 Derby City Classic. And by the way, Danny, as you well know, this is the eighth uh, uh, Derby City Classic here. And the two players, Efren Reyes and Alex Pagulian, you know, they're really no mystery to anyone. Both of them right now are probably playing the best pool in the world. No, you know, Mr. Reyes, Reyes wins the lag. You'll break in game number one. Reyes has been playing the best one park in the world since he's came over here, just about. Alex Pagulian, on the other hand, you know, roughly young player, but nevertheless, nonetheless effective this week, playing really well. He's been playing one pocket better each year, and each year he comes closer to, to raise his speed. This is going to be a, a really a great, great match. Well, I like to say that, you know, you, you said Efren was playing great one pocket when he came here 20 years ago. He really wasn't. He didn't know the game, but he sure learned it awful quick. And he added a lot of his own stuff in the game, creative, creative stuff. As you know, you've knocked heads with him a bunch of times. So you know him probably better than anybody. I think Reyes, in my opinion, once again, I, I keep saying the same thing. I don't want to seem redundant, but in my opinion, Reyes is the best one pocket player that's ever played this game. There's no question in my mind, at least. Well, you know, we have, a, we have a standing room only crowd here as we do each and every re year in Louisville. Yeah. I mean, these people are so knowledgeable. They come from all parts of the country just to watch these players play. We've had over 400 players play and enter this event. Well, anyway, you know, uh, Efren won the lag, which is very big with a race to three in one pocket. That means he's going to get more breaks, but he happens to throw away the first one. He scratched on the break. Very rarely uh, does he do that. So Alex has a chance to, like, overcome that break. I think what Alex has in mind here, he wants to bank the one ball into the balls. But most importantly, I think what he needs to do from this position is control the white cue ball. After backing the one cross quarter, I look for the cue ball to rest somewhere behind the five and the eight. Now, it looks like he's opting to shoot the 11. Yeah, I'll tell you, that's a better shot anyway. That one into the pile, it could glance and go right back towards Efren's pocket. I've seen that many times. Because they're round objects. It isn't like they're square and they hit and they stay there. They glance. But if he shoots, the, you, if, but yeah. if he shoots the one, what I, said, I mentioned, the cue ball should rest behind a five and the eight. That'll take away all that nonsense. Okay. Now watch where the cue ball goes here. Okay. He's not going to hit this with a lot of speed either, by the way. He just wants to get a ball or two behind on his side of the table. That's what he's trying to do. He wants to get a ball shootable. 
and he really didn't, and he almost sold out the uh, eight ball, but it, it stopped. It came to a rest, so he, you know, he really didn't do a real constructive shot there. He he didn't get any balls playable, and uh, uh, now Efren is going to have to overcome. He's playing him nine eight this game. But now look at the cue ball, Danny. That's what where he didn't want to end up with the cue ball. Had he positioned the cue ball behind the five and the eight, Reyes couldn't do any of this. He couldn't have been aggressive at all. See, now Alex is behind the balls, and he needs to do something extra to get out of this little bit of a trap. If he can get out of this trap, it's not much of a problem, but it looks like it might get worse the next time he comes to the right. table. He could escape this time because Efren really didn't put a ball in play to shoot. You know, there's no real threat here. Uh, so this would look real bad if there were a ball out in the open for Efren to shoot. Right now, he can do anything. He can get out of this inning. Okay, now if I were Alec, this is a very crucial time in this first game. Uh, if, if, if you take a scratch and you put him back, put the cue ball back down there where the five and the eight is, you're going to give him some sort of a bank on that blue two. You know, I like putting the cue ball up table near the two ball. Yeah, he should take a scratch. That would be a pretty good shot. If he can't hit the two, I don't know what he could do with the two if he could hit it, but I think right here he should take a scratch and put him in that far corner. I like and it's very important for him to reposition the cue ball up table, not back down table. Because if he goes back down table here, Efren is going to bank the two, and he's going to leave him up table again, maybe perhaps with the two in, in the pocket. He wants to do something better than that. He's trying to go way down here. Look, it might wiggle and stay there. Nah, that's not a good shot. The other scratch would have been better in the far corner near, near the two ball. But... Now, I mean, Efren has, uh, he can do anything with this 10 ball. I mean, he could bank through there and possibly make the uh, 5 ball. I think that goes through, and I don't think he could sell out. And he's got a bank on the 2 also. But what he, but the reason he's probably going to shoot the 2, by banking in the 10, he's going to open up balls on Packy Lyon's side. Something that you really don't want to do. But on this shot, he's going to play cue ball here. He's not going to play more, he's going to play more cue ball than two ball on this shot. Which means he'll have to hit the two on the full side. If you hit it thin, the cue ball is going to run around. He's not even going to, like you say, that's really playing the cue ball. Now, once again, <coughs> once again, Alex, if he comes down table, like if he kicks softly behind the orange five, he's going to leave it, Reyes a nice bank on the two, possibly. <coughs> That's why Reyes put the two there. He knows what's coming next. He's a great chess player, by the way. So this is chess. You've got to figure out what your opponent's going to do after you put him there. And it looks like Alex is going to kick at the five lightly, but there goes the two ball. That's why Efren has that over there. Nothing goes for Alex right now, so you know he's still going to have to get some balls out there. So for all you aspiring one-pocket players that are watching this, Remember, what good is it to bring the cue ball down table? Get rid of that two ball. Do something with that two ball, particularly if you're playing a strong player, because a strong player will come to the table and really hurt you with it. Now, Alex put the two ball on the other side of the table, far enough to where Efren really can't do anything offensive with it. Good shot by Pag uh, Paggy Lyon. Reyes still doesn't know what to do from this position because there really isn't much he can do. If I were he, Matter of fact, uh, this is a tough, tough position for Reyes to get aggressive with. I don't know. He may have a two rail around the eight and just draw the ball all the way down to the left. That's a possibility. He's looking at it, too. I know he knows creative stuff. I, I like shooting that, too, but he's not. Uh, at least at the moment. Uh, okay, Reyes, Reyes is looking to position a couple more balls near his pocket. Oh, man. Rare, but, rare mistake, and he jumped up a little bit. He wanted to cut the, the eight thin enough to get by the balls and go on that side rail. Instead, he sold out. But did you see the importance? Well, what is this? Paggy Lyon has a shot in the 11. He didn't see it, apparently. You know what? That may have been a fair trade-off. If you notice, if you go back on the tape, 
and you notice that had he shot the 11, there was nothing a after pocketing the 11. Now look at the position of the balls. Now, how he got this position was playing very smart pool in terms of negotiating the two ball. What he needed to do with the cue ball in terms of the two ball. Now, had he came down table, put Reyes on this side of the table, he would have never gotten this position. Yeah. This is a great one pocket we're watching so far, Danny. You're watching the greatest players in the game and and the greatest players playing their best. You know, they've been playing very well. Well, I don't know. Can he do something? Can he shoot that eight into the 11? You know, it looks like it's possible. He could bank the eight into the 11, I believe. Yeah, he would like to hit the eight. He's gonna he's gonna come off the eight here. He would like to hit the eight hard enough to push the eleven near the other side of the table, or possibly even in the pocket. He's gonna try to reposition the cue ball behind the red three. He's gonna use the red three here for a blocking ball, if providing I see the angle right. Yeah, well. He's, I think he's got a, a chance to make the 11. I mean, he's looking at other things. He could come off the 11 and possibly go let's through get, rails. Let's, let's, get a, let's get a view from the other side of the table where, he, where he's looking at the 8. Okay, uh, that's, the, that's the angle I like to have. That, that's the angle yeah, right there. Yeah. You, see the oh, angle off, he, yeah. you see the angle he has there, Danny? Uh -huh. He doesn't have the angle to pocket the 11. So therefore, he needs to do something differently here. So well, look, uh, at, look at the 615 combination. No, That'll bank that, towards no, the that's 11 a, That's too. a good shot. That's a good shot. Yeah. You know, He's and, not doing and that And if either. I shoot that shot, if I shoot that shot, I just, I like that. I like your shot there, Danny. Yeah, I like he, your shot. Oh, look it. He tried to cut that ball and missed it. Yeah, he and tried, now he loses a ball. He tried to thin the 11, sending the cue ball two cushions back into the stack. But the, Dan the shot Danny described was that 615 combination. From our vantage point, yeah. the way we were looking at it, that looked like the right shot. Yeah, and he, and he might have pocketed the 11. And okay. the angle that we got from our cameraman, that was an ideal angle. Yeah. And that, that's one Perfect. of the angles that we need more of, by the way, watching one pocket. Okay, now look what we got here. I mean, first of all, Alex owes two, Efren owes one. So we're going to have a longer game than usual as far as balls pocketed. What do you like here? Can he... Uh, well, I he, like banking the... Uh, this is a good shot. I like banking the, that... Is that the 14 ball? I like banking it off of the uh, the three, but... Well, he's going to reposition the cue ball behind the 10 here. Yeah. This is a very strong shot. And when, when a player can control the cue ball as well as Reyes can control the cue ball, which <laughs> there aren't many that can do no, that, no. that particular shot becomes very effective. Does he have a bank on the 12? I don't know. He can't hit it full enough to go between the 6 and 8. That would really require some threading the needle. Call song. Call song in the room. Call S O N G song. Well, I don't know. He might right, be able uh, to cut the, the 10 real, real thinly and uh, spin it with left-hand English and maybe get towards that three ball. It's a little delicate, but... Well, what, what he really has here, what he must do here is he must reposition the cue ball up to the upper right-hand corner of the table, utilizing the 14 that's blocking the three here. Yeah, he's going to fan this and try to go at the three with a little bit of English. Well, he don't want him to see that ball, and he 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 protected it. He didn't let him see that ten ball. Now he hit that shot really perfectly because, yeah. like Danny said, he can't afford to shoot that shot and let him see the ten or the thirteen. Right, and he guarded uh, both. Great shot, good speed. Looks like a simple little shot, but it's a big shot. This is almost like a feeling out process in a fight, right? I mean, nobody has really let out all their big guns yet. It's been ducking. Well, actually, Danny, I, I look at this as, listen, this is one pocket, and there are really crucial moves that need to be executed, and they're making them. 
Yeah, I like that combination bank. Well, I think he's going to get the worst of this. Alex, Efren, that is. Alex immediately goes to look at the tennis ball, which is really the wrong shot. He doesn't want to try to cut oh, that yeah. tennis. in. He's supposed to shoot the four into the 13 and stop the rock. That's definitely, that the, yeah. that's definitely, that's, the uh, that's definitely a good shot from this position. Well, he's not doing that. They're being over cautious. He's just going to hit the three, try to do something, put a ball in scoring position. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if he uh, he stopped him from hitting the 15. He might be able to hit that 15. I don't know how full he could, but if he could hit that 15 straight on, he's got a big shot. But what he's going to do, uh, no. Reyes is going to control the cue ball here, that's for sure. Yeah, how about he come close to making the ball? Well, there you go. A few moves later, Efren has got control of this uh, game right now. Okay, now this time, uh, Pagalion steps to the table, and he's got some serious problems. He's got some serious problems here. He's going to have to do something with that 13. You know, he's going to have to do something with the 13. Well, he's showing a little jump around energy, but... What is he going to do? Are you going to try to cut this ball into the 13 and go long, maybe, the Z stroke and whack it? That's what he tried to do, and he controlled the cue ball, maybe. Well, okay. well, Rez made an excellent shot, but the, sh but the reason he made that excellent shot was because of Pagulayan. And I'm not trying to fault Paggy Lyon for what he did, but the shot that you brought up by shooting the one, that one ball into the 13, sticking him in the stack, I thought was a better shot yeah. because there was no chance of selling out anything with that shot. And you also is going to increase your position. I mean, you know, you know, improve your position. He opted to shoot the other shot, which probably wasn't that bad of a shot, but he couldn't afford to allow Reyes to do what he did. And now Reyes is at the table with ball in hand. This is rack number one. And I expect Reyes Ray to really hurt him badly. Yeah. Well, they both, uh, before this inning, owed, Peg Lyon owes three, and now Reyes got even with that one. He needs eight. Tough to play uh, Efren uh, 11 to eight, wouldn't you say? Especially when Efren shooting with an open table. Yeah, this is straight pool. He's going to roll into those balls and open a few more. Perfectly. Well, he didn't quite get the seven open. Maybe he did. I don't know. Seven might go from uh, about the center of the table. But I'll tell you what, he does know how to get the balls off. Now, this particular shot is a very crucial shot in this run. He's going to have to control the cue ball nicely on this shot. A little overstroke. But he's got himself at an angle, Danny, on the eight where he can maybe brush the green six. Yeah, well, that's what he will be trying to do. Okay. You know, if he happens to hit that six on the nose or on our left side, he's going to have the seven. But I'm sure he didn't want to get over the top. That changes the control a little bit. Yeah, he brushed it, but tied him up more. But he well, got know, the nine. You know, he did brush the six, and, and that shot is not an easy shot to execute, particularly if you're in an awkward position. Yeah. Over like the, the position top. he was in. Over the top. But you know what? He did pretty well with it. He fell on the 15 now. <laughs> and he's not done yet. Not done at all. No. Now he's going to go to the 10, I believe. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I mean, usually when there's balls that are open on the table, he gets the majority of them, regardless of where they are. Well, he needed nine before the run. I could, I could see him getting them. Pretty good control. He's got a little bit of a thin hit. He's going to wind up having to play position on that stripe ball near the side pocket yeah, now. The 14. He'd like to get. He'd like to get close to the side cushion when he shoots that 14, because that'll give him an angle to go to the seven. He might have done it perfectly. He might have done it perfectly. Look at that angle. Beautiful Nicky angle. Yeah. That's just a beautiful angle, Danny. Good call. You know yeah. what? The only thing better than your call is, is his what he did. Is his execution. <laughs> yeah, he's going to go to the seven here. 
in this game is history. Now, are there any questions yet about the, what's happening out there and who Evan Reyes is and how well he can play? This is the guy, in my opinion, is the best player in the world. He got a shot. He outmoved Alex with his, his chest brain. And when he got a shot, he ran nine and out. And you've seen that many times. You know, when I played it, I have seen it too many times. <laughs> you didn't eat for about six months, I heard. You didn't have money to. <laughs> I had so much fun playing Reyes and losing. I swear. Yeah. Yeah, he makes um, you, he beats you and makes you like it. Well, well that's the secret what? on the road, you know. When you beat suckers on the road, you got to make them like it. <laughs> or, or, or they could be poor sports, you know. That's a pretty good break. That's a pretty good break. He can't see the 15, and that's the real threat. Okay, well, he'll, well he'll, maybe uh, an option he may have here, and just do something simple because he's not really in trouble. He may just, he may just kick softly behind the 15 here. You know, that's an option he has. Uh, I probably, uh, yeah, he's probably going to kick softly behind the 15 because he really can't run the risk of doing anything special with the cue ball, or at least trying to. So he just kicks softly behind the 15. Well, if he doesn't get him behind the 15, he's going to leave a bank. Now the, uh, well, the, the bank that he's going to leave him possibly will, is, is a sellout bank. Well, it'll be a pretty easy one if a guy can shoot the four. But meanwhile, he's, he's going to go off to three somehow. Well, then if he's doing that, my shot was totally wrong. See, he banked, he played all that. He and banked he went the into ball. the 15. Yeah, he had right. a hair right-hand English so that when he hit that rail, he spun at the 15. Well, great, he great control. He did leave him a bank, but a bank that's a lot more difficult considering the position of the cue ball. Well, also, uh, he can't take liberty and shoot this bank. It's not a bad bank shooting the three, but you, you can sell out the combination right. to four, six. Right. Now, the combination that Danny just pointed out, the four ball finally ended up in a position on the table next to the green six, making that combination very pocketable from a lot of areas on the table. From everywhere, you if know, he so, can hit it. So, therefore, Pagalion once again steps to the table, and he really has a lot of things to... Uh, to, to think about and deal with. And he's going to be preoccupied, like Danny said, with that 3-6 possible combination. Well, I'd break it up now. He's over the top. He can't do much. I roll the ball under the pink and hit the 6. And that'll get him out of the inning because that combination is really dangerous. Right. That's a winning shot for Reyes. Danny yeah. probably has the right idea. Just roll behind there and, you know, and hit the rail after the six, and you're out of the inning anyway. It's not a bad shot. What's that for going to do let's get a, there? Let's get a side view from where for, for where Paggy Lyon is. That's the, that's yeah. a good that's a good shot. Now you see the shot. If he can hit the bottom rail first and just softly go into the six, he can remove that very dangerous combination out of there. Let's take a look and see what he does. Nothing to do. Either. Okay, there you, know, you go. That's all he needed to do. You know, right. he didn't do really anything, you know, uh, aggressive because he couldn't. No. And he couldn't leave a 3-6 combination there. Right. So now Reyes made an excellent shot. The results were just as good as the thought. Put Pagaline in trouble. And now Reyes can actually create a better position for himself. I think he's spinning to bank this. He's got to twirl it a little, which he did. You see it? To hit it. And he put it on his side, and that's always a good shot. If you got nothing, put a ball on your side, even if it's way upstream. Let's get that angle we had before on was on Pagalian's side of the table. He's banking the six at the pink, uh, and we he's going to billiard the fifteen. Billy, let, let's look at the other one, not that angle. Let's look at that's the angle I want to see. Yeah. Yeah. Now he can bank the six into the pink, like Danny says. Draw the cue ball up and hit that 15. A lot of good things can happen for Paggy Lyon. Yeah, but you must move that six. That's the big threat. And you have to control that cue ball, hit it into that 15. Hit that 15 with the cue ball and let the balls go where they may. Most importantly here, play cue ball. Nicely executed, let the balls hit. go. A little bit too hard. Right. 
that was another another yeah. key in that particular shot, yeah. like Danny said. The speed that you hit that shot with determined how well you were going to do with it. Yeah, he could have used that pink sitting on that first diamond, and then uh, he'd get a little advantage. Right now, actually nothing goes. That combination is tied up. He he has he has a couple balls that are clear. The but, one and the eight. Uh, you know what he does have? If the t a 10 ball was positioned close enough to the 13, he can draw the cue ball into the stack. Okay, this is what he can do here. He can draw the cue ball into the stack. Now watch what he's going to do here. See, That's he's drawing he the cue ball into the stack, opening up balls on his side, once again creating problems for, for Pagulayan. Now had a ball gone to his side of the table, on, by, his, by that side rail, Pagulayan would have been in a world of trouble. Right, the balls aren't, uh, he doesn't have any gimmies to shoot at, that's Efren. But where do you go from here? You're going to just keep ducking without ever doing aggressive stuff? Now I don't this, know what he can do this, with the eight. This bank doesn't need to go. He needs to position a ball near his pocket. He, he sold, sold out. out the nine here. He sold out. I think he was a little precipitous with his decision there in shooting that shot yeah. and sell, selling out the nine. He actually hit it good. It was on the way to the pocket, but... It was about a foot and a half too short. And now here's, we're going to watch the magician start picking away at these balls. This is field goal position, as Danny would yep. say. Cue yep. ball in between the 1 and the 15, like yep. this. Perfect. Field goal position. Now, isn't that just beautiful to watch? Yeah. He would have liked to got to the 1. I don't think he has the 1. But he definitely got the 15. But the 8 goes, I think. Does it? I don't think. Oh, yeah, maybe it does. Yeah. If, you know, if the, eight, no, the goes, eight goes, that's it. You know, uh, he's looking to run out here. He's oh, going to sure. get an angle off of, off of, I believe, the one to go across table. Yeah. Now, this is the ball you use right now. Go across table on this ball. I think this is the correct shot, Danny. You agree I know, with this? I, no, I like shooting the one and then the 15, and the 15 will have the same angle to go across to maybe the six or the combination 12-4. Let's see what happens here. Or that's a 13-4. Well, he's shooting a 15 to go across the table. Yeah. Because he's got a good angle there. Yeah. But he got on the rail. Let's take a look at the angle on the other side of the table where the cue ball is toward his pocket. That's the angle we like right there. Okay, let's take a look at yeah. it. And now we can see what's happening. He can make the six. Uh, if he follows it into the pink, the pink should brush the three. And maybe the three will end up in front of the pocket. But he has to hit it with speed because he wants it to glance the most it can. He's playing a combination. Yeah, yeah. he's playing a kind. Might be a billiard too. See it? A billiard combination. Yeah. So those are the yeah. types of shots yeah. that Ray is just sees instinctively. He just sees yeah. all those types of shots because he's such an excellent billiard player and rotation player. And he's always working a lot around a lot of balls. You know, we're talking about out there, he didn't just shoot the combination right in. He shot the first ball into the edge of a ball, and if you put the ball right there, it was a dead ball, and he hit it perfectly. Right. And, and the and, way uh, he shot that shot, like Danny described, increased the accuracy of the shot because he could afford to hit it a couple different ways and still pocket the ball. But he had, you know... He had the knowledge and the understanding of that particular shot, or those shots of that type. Yeah, I mean, yeah. what a great player. There's it, no question it, it about it. It was a great shot. Well, he's and, just a great player. And another good thing about that particular shot, the cue ball was going nowhere. The other shot in the six, it would have flew around a little bit. Well, he must, he's playing for 10, it looks like. So you really can't afford to make any kind of mistake with Reyes. Even if it appears that the balls aren't open, he'll find a way to open them up. Right. And here it is. This is the game ball. He ran a nine now and an eight. And he's leading two to nothing, just like that. It's over with. He's got eight. No, actually, in defense of Pagan Lyons, he really hasn't done that much wrong in this match. He may have made maybe one or two little blunders, but little blunders turn into huge blunders when you're playing Reyes. That's exactly right. And it's going to go back to that shot where he wouldn't bank the ball into that 13. Uh, he's really had no shots to get balls. You know what I mean? He's like losing right now uh, 16 to minus 3. 
I don't know what's going through the minds of this maybe 150, 200 people that are surrounding the pit right here watching this match. But let me know, in case you don't know what's happening, you're watching the greatest one-pocket player in the world playing pretty damn good. Yeah, he is. But the only good thing for, every time we said that, he broke them bad. <laughs> you know, I've seen this end ball go in that other pocket many times. It's like, remember yesterday I said, boy, that would be a nice break if you could, could guarantee making that end ball and hitting it on the wrong side. How does that ball go in that pocket, hitting it on the wrong side? Anyway, that was Carmen Sardo racking with the Sardo rack. Uh, he's got a new product there. It's a lot lighter, less expensive. This shot, crucial shot coming up, Danny. Very nicely executed shot. But I tell you what, that wasn't an easy shot to execute. A couple things could have gone wrong on that particular shot. And if they would have, he would have packed his bags. But what, you know what? He executed that shot to perfection. Okay, while he's thinking here, well, we got other uh, sponsors. We got the Spider Laser Aiming Method. We got BCA Pool Leagues. We got Diamond Tables, of course. Q off Pool Table Cleaner. And what do you? And you say to yourself, "Where do I put Paggy Lion from here?" Well, if there's a place to put Paggy Lion, Reyes will know where it is. Notice he's utilized the six and the eight as interfering balls, repositioning the cue ball down table and back of those balls, protecting that one. So he for he cannot see the one. Now Paggy Lion, you know, is in a lot of trouble here because well, not really. If he kicks behind a five, if he hits that five or excuse me, or whatever that ball is, he's liable to scratch, he's got some problems. Oh no, if you, you know, shoot it soft, you, it won't glance enough. That is okay. the shot. Uh, no, the, the shot is to come off the 13 ball. Now that's the ball that's on top of the stack, and then go in behind the four in that fashion. That way there's no scratch there. So if he comes off that 13 ball. Yeah, there's no scratch, I, really, I, honest. I don't like that, that's the shot, that, yeah. that's the right shot. Come off the 13 ball, then put him behind that ball. That's a much better shot. Yeah, less chance of, uh, of scratching because you're going more direct into the ball. But I think he could yeah, shoot this either. Is, this is much better. Yeah. See, much he, better. He, he wasn't even close. That's a great shot. It's a great shot. See, now Reyes, once again, has the option, as he did the last time he was at the table, repositioning the cue ball back up the other end. But this time, when he does it, Paggy Lion can kick, you know, it can kick or he can go right directly into that four ball. So Paggy Lion has really created a much better position for himself. Reyes wants to put him on the cushion. Notice, that was important for him to put him on the cushion, but so now when he comes off of the five ball, he can't control the cue ball. Right. Well, he can come off the 11 if he's in trouble and go all the way back down behind the five. Now that's, that's an possible. excellent shot. That's an excellent shot because he, by coming off the 11, like Danny described, he has better control of the speed of the cue ball. After hitting the side cushion, he'll then go into the five and the five will stop the progress of the cue ball. I like that shot a lot. That's what he's gonna shoot. He don't like it, you know why? Because he's losing two to nothing and he hasn't really been, been able to get loose because Reyes has been like tying him up, putting him in trouble. He's not letting Paggy Line get into a gear he enjoys playing in. Okay, he's going off the six now. He's gonna try to reap it. Now this shot, it looks like he's got a pretty good angle on it. Let's see what happens. Yeah, that was actually the four and he, he did it really. But you know what? It's possible now for Efren to bank this 15 and put him way back there, tripled up again. I don't think he has the angle to do that from where he is. Not Notice. if you go to the pocket. Right. But if you hit it on the full side, not going to the pocket, play the cue ball only, he could do it. Now, Reyes is looking at the kiss on the 14-7, and is also looking at the three. So therefore, he doesn't want to put him up table, leaving him a dead kiss. And let's take a look at it now. Triple him up again and put him on the end rail. 
Alex is going to get tired of being there. He's been there about four shots in a row now. You know what Reyes did there? I'm going to tell you what he did there, which was really, really intelligent. He used the 11 ball, uh, uh, Danny. He used the 11 ball to preclude Pagu Lion from kicking to the side rail behind the pink. He can't even kick now. No, he can't. You know, had, he, had he been short of that, he could have kicked to the side rail behind the pink and put Reyes back down here. Yeah. But Reyes is too smart for that. He's too smart for the joint. I'm telling you, I can't believe how I, I think is. Efren's your favorite player, Billy. We got that. We no, hold got it that. a second, Dan. Yeah. He's, he's, and not a bad and he'll hero. All, it'll always be my favorite player. Yeah. <laughs> but I like to bring up these subtleties that he's doing out there. You know. Oh, that's a big point there. You see, he, he put him there so he couldn't kick. The 11 stopped him from kicking. Can he hit the 11 straight on and follow the cue ball and maybe put him on the second diamond here? Is that sitting for that? It looks a little different from here. But I think he's got that angle. I think he's got to shoot the 11 straight on and try to put the cue ball on that side rail. I don't. He's got some problems oh, there. I don't know what this. He's got. Look what he's doing out there. He, he's in Cleveland trying to shoot this shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jacked up in the air. I mean, that's, this is asking a heck of a lot. What's he doing? Something different. Something I can't. Whatever I can't he's doing see. is very risky. This is very risky. Whatever he's doing. He hit it. He did it pretty he hit well. It, he hit it perfectly. That's what he did. He hit it perfectly. You know what? He better hit it perfectly because Reyes is not going to let up on him. Oh, is Efren going to come off the seven and try to put him behind the nine and bank the three on his side? That's possible. Oh, he got lucky. Wow. People are all saying woo. The backer is drinking a big shot of whiskey right now. Okay, well, he's left Pagan Lion a shot on the seven to reposition the cue ball behind the two. If he can get this cue ball close to the two, Reyes will be in a, a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. It's got to get it down. He didn't okay. get it down far enough. Now, the difference, the difference of getting it down another six inches closer to the two and where it is now is winning this particular game, you know, quicker. I mean, I think he's going to win this game because he's got a superior position, but... Had he gotten that cue ball back down near the two, Reyes would have had serious problems. Well, guys out there, you're seeing really a great match because you're getting variety. You watch Efren run, run nine and eight perfectly, and you've seen a lot of moving, a lot of thinking, and I'm afraid that in the thinking department, uh, Efren's got a big edge. Now, Reyes should think about going back up table again here. See, back yeah. up where he put him the last couple of times because that's yeah. right, that's available. It, all this indecision down here makes me believe that he should go, that he should go back up table where the 15 ball is. Yeah, shoot the 15 like he did with the 11 and go forward a little bit. Two rail the 15. That's one of the shots. That's the thing about one pocket. Every inning, there might be four or five different shots. If you find the best choice every time, you're going to be a good player. Because there are many options here. 15, just like you hit the 11 a little while ago. Go forward, two rails, leave them tripled up. Protect the one. He wants to protect the three ball, too, here, Look by the way. Look at that hit. He wants to protect the three because the three ball is a ball that Pag and Lion can do something with. I don't think he can hit the three full. Okay. Well, he's got to, you know, if he can't hit a full, then he can't do anything with it. Nope. How about this, Billy? Now, those balls have killed them the whole game, the six and the eight. How about shooting <coughs> the six into the rail, moving the eight, and, and it looks like he's got the angle to go towards Efren's pocket okay. with the cue ball. Excellent shot. I like that. I like that shot because it's natural. Cue ball repositioning is natural here. That's the shot. Now, Efren... Well, he's still kind of doubled up unless the six goes by. You know what? He, they, he, now, he's been guilty twice now of not repositioning the cue ball in a position where he needed to. A little harder. Now, on that shot, it was a lot easier for him to feel the speed of the cue ball. Yeah. He so could have shot a little harder. You know, and that's, they, that's a big shot there, Danny, yeah. and he didn't get down. No, he let him see the one. That was his main ball, and he let him see it, and he's going to go into the six. 
Oh, man, oh, look at this speed. You know, Paggy Lyon was very fortunate that Reyes hit the nine ball with the one ball. Had he not struck the one, the nine ball with the one ball, Paggy Lyon would have been still in this chair. Oh, yeah, Efren got a little fortunate there. No, Paggy Lyon got yeah, fortunate. Yeah, but so did Efren because the one could have sold out. You know, it didn't hit any balls. It went right back out in the middle. Well, he could trickle this ball under everything. There you go. You see, that, that's why Paggy Lyon got fortunate, because Reyes yeah. had the understanding that he needed to mix those balls up a little bit. Paggy Lyon was guilty of not getting the cue ball down table far enough to protect that from happening. See, he's over the top. If he weren't over the top, he could do anything off of this ball. The nine, that is. He's yeah. got some problems. If he tries to go up table for the six here, Danny, he may brush the one. If well, I don't know if he could do that. Well, 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 what I'm saying is, yeah. if he tries to go up table uh, to, for the six, he could brush the one. Now, he could go in between the one and the eight here, possibly, if he's able to bridge it right. Yeah. So he's trying to go, so he brushed he the one. He did. Now, if he would have brushed the one a little more heavily, he may have ended up in the side yeah. pocket. Yeah, and plus he wouldn't have had a shot. But now he has a shot with an angle, and he has a very good chance to running some balls here. Okay, crucial shot for Paggy Lyon coming up. Like Danny says, he's got a shot and he's got an angle. There's no, there's no risk here shooting the shot in terms of giving up another shot. So therefore, he should hit this reasonably, you know, reasonably well because it's a, it's more or less a free shot. So he should hit it cleanly. Yeah, he needs to get on the scoreboard because Efren's leading two to nothing. Race to three, it would be over. Alex is talking to Efren about something. That's in. Okay, that was a great shot that he had. It was a great opportunity for him to win this game. You know, now the he, balls are open. He can go to the two right here. Soft draw it and go right to the two underneath. Like that. Perfect. Well, I think he's got a chance to run out this game. Well, uh, count me. He needs four uh, balls. You run out for him. He needs four balls. What do you do? Yeah, he needs uh, actually three. Three balls. That's making three. it. That's easier to run out for. Oh, you. Well, it's easy. He, <laughs> the, the two, the thirteen, and the eight. He can go to anything here, but I I like going. He could go to the one if he's afraid of the eight. You know, if he hits too hard, he could get snuckered, so... You know, I like going to the one. Well, sure. You know why I like going to the one? Because if you play for the eight and you happen to go up table a little bit too far, the seven blocks the, the pocket You're ability right. of the eight. He, he, so by playing for the one, you, in, you ensure your chances of running out, which he's done. This is game number three. It goes to Pag and Lyon. Look this. This is one of those pull the key out of his back because okay. he, he's out. <laughs> Game number three does go to Paggy Lyon. It was a very hard, hard fought game. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, an he ended up winning it. And now he only trails in this match two games to one. And anything can happen in a short race to three. As perfectly as Reyes has been playing, and he has been playing absolutely beautifully, Danny. Yes. You can't deny that. He, has. he still runs the risk of losing this match. Of course. Well, you're playing a great player who doesn't quit. He's a little guy, but he's got a heart bigger than him, and his name Pagalion, and they call him the Lion. Tough man. Look at him. That, that guy could have ran around the country, and everybody would have played him. And he's a real happy little guy, and uh, very colorful. Very colorful. If he can break the balls well, yeah. win this game, the final game is going to be some kind of a game. Yeah, with Efren breaking, that's the that's the uh, the benefit. Look at he hit it perfect. That ball went in. You might have seen an eight this game. Looks like that's all we're going to see is it going all the way out when they get a shot. You know, Reyes could bank the eight here if he. You know, I have seen him do this a countless number of times. He'll take a look at the situation. What are you going to do with the cue ball if you eliminate the three? If he doesn't feel that he can really secure the cue ball in a good position, he's going to bank this eight. No, he can't hit the eight, Billy. Look at the monitor. 
You're right. Look he at that. Excellent. Hit. If he Excellent could hit shot. the eight, he would have shot it already. Ex well, then what he's going to do now is he's going to freeze him to the to the stack off the 13. Yeah. That's his only shot. And the reason yeah. he's going to do this, he's going to try to reposition a ball on his side of the table. But most importantly, he's going to put the cue ball in the stack like so, okay, and buy a little time. But he was able to get a ball on his that side of the table, not only on his side of the table, but very near that corner pocket. I saw just that happening, you know, to get that four in play, but he's going to stick right there. This is going to be a bunch of sticking shots here. What do you do now? Well, the player who doesn't have the ability to stick is going to be at a disadvantage. Yeah. Reyes is going to look now at that 10 ball, possibly off the four. He didn't look long, which means it's probably not close. That 10 9 combination off yeah, the four. Yeah, it's, it's hitting it right on the nose, I believe. But if you can. If you can hit it, I like drawing the ball with a little speed, shoot the combination nine right at the ball and just put him up in that far corner. I think that's the shot here, you know. He doesn't, he can't stick the ball and keep him snuckered. No, he can't stick the ball. All the sticking is over. Yeah. All the sticking is over, he has to look elsewhere. He has to come out of his bag of tricks with some other trick. It's you know not gonna be the stick. He can shoot the shot I just said, knock the nine into the uh, pink ball and try to go way up in that far corner with the cue ball. Or if he was really in a trap, he could kick the pink in and then go from there. But he's shooting that first shot. Cue ball's the main thing. Watch where the cue ball goes. Oh, I'm, I'm, wouldn't you have hit that hard? Well, you know what? He tried. He thought he had a chance to make it off the pink. That, uh, oh, but with the speed that he hit it with, Danny, that's the only thing he could have had in mind. Yeah, you're right. He wasn't thinking of what. But you see where the ball was going? A little speed. He had a chance you know, to get I, out I of like it. your shot, providing he had a nice angle. And the position to put the cue ball in off of your shot would have been behind a 13. That's, that's the position that he would have liked to end it up shooting that shot behind a 13. Because look how big of a pocket he has down there with all those balls. That three ball is a yeah. big ball for him. For Pagaline. Now, Pagaline, like I said, if he happens to break the balls good and win this game, we're going to see a fantastic finish. Now, it's up to Pagaline to give us this. Yeah, we're going to have an exciting finish if, if Pagaline can. He's looking at the combination. He's looking at the 5 3 combination. He He's already thinking of how he's going to get eight. You know, you can get three, four, or five easily doing something else, but this way he can get them all. And that's what he's thinking of. Yeah. Did he get a shot? Does he have the 11? I think he's got the 11. Let's yeah. take a look at the angle that he's looking at. Come on, let's go over. That's the side of the table yeah. we like to look at. I think from his, his position, he, he has, has the 11. He has it. Okay. Now, he's going to brush the, uh, the four ball here. And after brushing the four, he may go into either the six or the 13. Yeah, the main thing here is don't miss the ball. Absolutely, Danny. And that's a very no, no, noteworthy point. You yeah. know, you find yourself in a little bit of trouble in terms of maybe playing position for your next ball. So therefore, if you have that type of a problem, you're confronted with that, the most important thing is to make the ball. He missed it. Oh, man, the ball looked up, saw it was Alex, and jumped in. Now, let's get another view from where the cue ball is in relation to the combination. That's an excellent shot right there. Okay, I don't believe that he can pocket the combination. Now, it all started off in his first shot, Danny. If he's going to try to get eight from that position, he has to be, he has to be pretty, pretty confident that he can come up with the next shot, yeah. which he wasn't. Now he's found himself in a lot of trouble because Reyes has a lot of balls in the front of his pocket. And, and he really doesn't balls. even need a lot of balls until run eight in yeah. front of his pocket. And he has easy shots to start with. So what is Alex going to do? Is he going to shoot the seven into the rail with speed and try to wham everything away? But he could leave a bank on the eight. Yeah, he's then. got some serious problems here. Can he, can he shoot the nine with a little bit of glance where it'll bounce away if he gives him the pink ball? And let's take a look and see if he can uh, let's take a look and see if he can kick the four ball in using the 
top rail. Can we get a view from the from the that's the that's the view I want. And see if he could kick up to the top rail and come back down and knock that ball in, he can get out of this trap. Yeah. That would be the shot. That's he can get out of this trap. Yeah, if he, he could go up table and kick behind the nine, pocketing the four, he can get out of this trap. Yeah, but look at his view. The ten is in the way for that. Yeah, it is in the way. Well, can he kick into the uh, the rail where where the uh, four is? Can he kick in there and kick that is the nine ball away and billiard the four in? With a high ball, it will go forward if he has any angle. No, he can't get in between there. He can't do it? No. I think what he's going to have to do, well, I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I don't, I don't, I don't think. Uh, this ball banks. Well, I think he's shooting a bank. Well, then, that, then I don't, I don't, I don't fault him. Bank. I don't fault him for that. Uh, well. I don't fault him for that, okay? I don't really fault him at all because uh, he didn't have any out other than yeah. to kick behind the nine, the long rail, and I know that he didn't have room to do that, yeah. but he could have spun it. He could have spun the cue ball and tried yeah. that. Well, he, he decided to go down swinging, and it looks like he, if, if Efren can fall on, and you see that? All those four balls, they all go clearly into the pocket. If he can fall on one of those, this match is over. Okay, now this shot, Danny, is, uh, isn't a simple shot by any means. If he comes up with another shot, he's a favorite to win this match. Or this, I would or try to game. go between the six and the uh, thirteen. He did a two railer, so I, you know, I don't like. Uh, he got sort on the fifty yard line, too thin on the eight and the six, but he might be able to roll into that uh, thirteen ball if he shoots softly. I kind of like shooting the eight here. No, I think this is the shot. If he shoots softly, the cue ball won't glance much, and he'll hit that 13. He'll have a shot. That's the shot. That's, that's why you never could play straight pool, Billy. <laughs> These little bunk <laughs> shots where you billiard balls and all that, it's not in your repertoire. Huh. But well, you I'm, do I'm, move real well. But You're right about that, Danny, and uh, but this particular guy out here, has a total understanding of, all of, go that. of going into the ball. <laughs> sure does. You know, uh, of, of uh, once again, I know I'm, <laughs> I'm be beating his drum. And I like to say that, uh, you know, he hit it soft because the harder you shoot on an angle, the wider the ball glances. He wouldn't even hit that ball if he hit it with speed. Oh, he perfect shot. If he hit that ball, the run was over. Okay, let's take a look. Six, ten. Uh, Reyes leads four to three. He's looking to get four balls. He's looking to get four balls from here, and I think he's going to end up having to bank a ball to yeah. to, uh, to finish his run here. Pretty easy bank. Yeah, I would go right to the uh, ten uh, right now. Yeah, you're going to you get the, get the ten next because you ensure yourself at least getting that ball. Now. Uh, he would like to come back for the 15. That's the ball to the left of the cue yeah, ball. He may do that because he got a little off angle here. It would be a little tough to roll forward and have a good bank, you know, on that uh, 14 ball. I think if you're trying to get all the way out, you go to the 15 right now. And then you shoot the, the little bank on the 14. Now, for just the ordinary champion, going to the 15 might be the wrong shot. But for Reyes, going to the 15 is the correct shot because of his mastery of the cue ball. How about the mastery of the language? Ordinary champion. <laughs> I didn't think there was such a thing. You know, that sounds like a contradiction. Well, they're ordinary, ordinary champions. And they're champions special. Champions are special. And then there's Reyes. They're all special. You're right. Then there's Reyes. Well, you know, he is going to probably try to get a soft bank here, but even at that, if he misses the soft bank, Alex is in the game. So he's thinking right now about whether he wants to shoot the bank at the game ball. I mean, he, he should at least hang it up. That's almost what I call my electric chair. Well, he, yeah, he's going down for position on the bank. Make no mistake about it. And he would like to end up in a position with the cue ball after banking the 14 or whatever that stripe ball may be to roll softly into the two. Right. That angle sits there. That that sits there. He's going to roll forward and try to get that angle. He did, and he's going to shoot He's going to shoot the 8. He I mean the 2. He's going to shoot the 2. 
No, I don't think he's going to shoot well, to two. Well, then he's not going to shoot anything. I think he's going to shoot to seven and clear that pocket. Yeah. That's what I think. Yeah. I think when it's all said and done, he's going to shoot that seven and clear that pocket. How about if he banks the 14 and draws into the seven? That's a pretty good shot, too. Oh, he's shooting it. But yeah. you know what? I have he's to, going into I, the this seven. Is, this is something I disagree with. Shot that. Yeah. Well, you know. He had him safe anyway. Uh, what, what, what more could you possibly say that he hasn't said with his two stick on the table? Well, Alex is shoot, shooting a shot right now for his backer, and he didn't hit that too well. The, the thing about it is now, Alex draws back in, so we still have four players in the tournament. In my opinion, uh, uh, Danny, uh, this, this is a hustler talking, by the way. In no, my opinion, are you a hustler? No, no, this is, this is the way a hustler talks. Oh. In my opinion, Efren Reyes could have, given, could have given anybody that's ever played this game at least eight to seven. That's my opinion, at yeah. least eight to seven. Well, you know I got him stuck. You know that. <laughs> well, almost anybody. <laughs> no, right. I, I played him one time, one pocket, and I got him stuck a thousand, Billy. But this is before he really learned the game. He could shoot. And you know what my logic was? I know he could shoot. He doesn't know one pocket real well. So I never let him have an angle to get to another ball. If I gave him a shot, he was shooting at one. Well, that's hard to believe because he doesn't even need an angle. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> okay, we're going to close this up. Danny, it's really been a pleasure working yeah. with you here. Seriously. We're so, going to have some good matches coming up, yeah. folks. Don't leave your sets. So on behalf of Danny DiLiberto, this is Bill Incardona saying thanks a lot for supporting the Billiard Club Network and Accustats. And if you buy a phone, give Pat a call. 1-800-828-0397.